Welcome to Disturbingly Cheap Reviews. This week we slide away from the professional wrestling ring with the mid-card movie that is The Marine 2. It stars WWE superstar Ted DiBiase Jr. According to rumors, his role was originally written for the much bigger wrestling star Randy Orton. Sadly, Randy took his father's advice that a broken bone is a great career boost and missed out on all the fun. The plot is simple. Ted DiBiase plays a Jules Verne reading, man's man, marine sniper with a heart of gold. Because Harley Quinn romance characters don't get enough screen time, I guess. However, while on a job, he accidentally gets a kid killed and needs to take a break. So he goes with his wife, who happens to work as the PR director for an island resort, for a free vacation. So there you go. Kill a kid, go to paradise. From there, the movie is really easy to explain. It's Die Hard on an Island Resort. I wish I were joking. It joins the ranks of many direct -to video action movies that just basically take Die Hard's idea and put it in a new location. The original Marine allowed me to use the word buffoonery when talking to friends about it. It features John Cena being pretty much impenetrable to everything, including one scene where he is inside of a gas station that explodes and then he just gets up. You won't find that in the Marine 2, which is looking for more of a realistic approach. Ted DiBiase injures himself trying to get out of a pair of handcuffs. The action scenes themselves are handled well. The fight scenes are questionable at times, as the camera likes to go into a circular motion around the characters, which I still haven't figured out. The acting is horrible, but again, it's action movie acting. One of the smartest things they did was hire Michael Rooker, a very talented actor who helps balance out Ted DiBiase's blandness. Ted DiBiase has the emotional range of burnt toast. For all I know, he was CGI'd into this movie. In all, I'd give this movie a C minus. It's a Die Hard ripoff, and it rips off Die Hard to a Die Hard extent. So I guess that's all it's looking to do. If you want a cheap alternative to Die Hard, starring a man who may or may not just be a emotionless cyborg, then this movie would be for you. And with that, let's move to the spoilers. The hero wins. Ted DiBiase rescues his wife, kills the bad guy, lives happily ever after. The only thing different from Die Hard is instead of throwing him off a building, the bad guy gets blown up on a ship that DiBiase dives off of in probably the worst slow motion dive I have ever seen. So I want to just take these spoiler areas to explain just how much of a Die Hard ripoff this is. I'm going to give you the eerie similarities. First, we're going to skip all of the obvious ones, which I hope to have listed here for you. And let's just move on to this. The inept leader of the group who is supposed to save the hostages. Whether it be the man from Die Hard who at one point utters the line, I hope that wasn't a hostage, to this unnamed military leader who gives up rather quickly. Then, there's also the group that tries to go in to save the hostages and fails horribly, from Die Hard SWAT. From the Marine 2, hired mercenaries who are bad at their job. The hero must injure themselves in order to escape a situation. On Die Hard, John McClane has to run barefoot on glass. In the Marine 2, DiBiase has to twist his wrists in order to escape handcuffs, causing them to bleed. It looked like it kind of hurt. The bad guys really aren't terrorists. That's right, they're just in it for the money. Probably the worst twist Die Hard ever gave us because so many people think it is witty. Alan Rickman and his crew just wanted some bearer bonds in the original film. While in this film, the bad guys are looking for reparations for the evil white guy building an island resort on their island. And now my personal favorite, the newly made friend who happens to overcome a personal obstacle just in time to save the hero. Whether it be Al from Die Hard pulling out a gun to shoot the somehow still alive henchman, or in this one, Michael Rooker as Church, who happens to just show up randomly to shoot a bad guy before they shoot DiBiase. You don't know how much I would have loved to have seen Michael Rooker become the star of this movie, but it was not meant to be. And those are my favorite five similarities, so I should really wrap this up. Thank you for listening, and until next time, just watch Die Hard. Again.